Um, but anyway, thank you very much for all coming this evening. And tonight is a special, special concert. It's never been done outside Holland before. I don't think it's ever been done in English before. We are recording it this evening um, for CD purposes. Anyway, enjoy it. I'll take you to Thijs van Leer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for inviting me and trying to tell you something about my so-called career. It all started with my father playing the flute so beautifully. He was self-taught and he had to flee from Holland because of his Jewish background. And he could flee to Switzerland where he could do Conservatory of Music in Geneva. And then he came via France and Spain, he came to England and he came to free Holland from the Germans via England. And also he fought before in the beginning of the war till we had to capitulate. And uh, so he came back from uh, the war he was 25 years old. He played the flute very well. He had his uh, license of uh, conservatory, excellence license. And he just met my mother and my mother wanted him to be in the Concertgebouw Orchestra, the big orchestra in Amsterdam. But he chose for a career of being a manager of a big firm for wallpaper. And that firm was... Uh, founded by my grandfather and my grandfather did not come back from the war as did not my grandmother they were killed by the germans in the camp and so my father he chose to be a businessman during the day and in the evening he played a lot of bach johann sebastian bach he was so inspiring and it was always beautiful when he was playing. And later, when I was like 12 years old, I started to be a pianist. I had piano lessons from my mother first when I was three years old. And then from the sixth year on, I went to real teachers, you know. And I even had, when I was 10 years old, I performed in the small hall in the Concertgebouw in Amsterdam, playing a piece of Johann Sebastian Bach. And maybe I could start with that. And it went like this. This was very nice because I studied like 
half a year on one little piece just in order to get it perfect, you know. And also for the teacher it was important that he could show his pupils to the public. And it also helped us to overcome stage fright. So it worked in many ways, but it also gave me not too much opportunity to read uh, music fast. So I tried to escape that and I had also really problems in reading the two hands of the piano music. So I began to improvise. So slowly I actually improvised more than I played from the written music from the partiture. So, and that actually became my profession later because I became a composer, a songwriter. And then it was like when I was 12 years old, I was so fascinated not only by the classical music anymore, but also by the modern jazz, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, and people like that, and later Herbie Hancock and many others inspired me a lot. And I was asked to join jazz groups to play on parties at school. I was in a grammar school doing many languages, German, French, Dutch, and English, and Old Greek, and Old Latin. And during parties, I was always being the youngest in the group. And of course, I was never dancing with the girls because I was playing the music. So my friends were dancing the girls and I was doing the music. And I remember I started with a very simple blues in F. And a blues is a scheme of 12 bars. And maybe you recognize that. <laughs> Also, other pieces like a little more difficult, Green Dolphin Street, of course, you recognize that when I play it. kind of impressionistic. Thank you very much. So I also began to be interested in lyrics, but not so much the lyrics of you and me, and I need you so, and why did you leave me? So the man-woman relation did not appeal to me so much. And what was more appealing to me actually was uh, a lyric about you with a capital Y. And not saying it was the Lord or God, not so much, but religiously inclined lyrics. For instance, by Inayat Khan, the founder of the Sufi movement. And this was also the atmosphere at home that I was brought up in. And the first thing I wrote when I was like 15 or 16 was Moving Waves and that um, later it became the title of the second LP that Focus made and that made also Focus world famous because there was also a big hit on that album.
called Hocus Pocus. And Moving Waves was actually the first song that I wrote. No, the very first song was when I was eight years old that I made a welcome song for Uncle Willie. And that was the man that helped my father in Switzerland when he was doing the conservatory. And when he came to Holland, I composed a song that went like this. like the very first but then when I was 16 I composed the moving waves song that was recorded later for focus 2 and that went like this started to do some jazz and some impressionistic kind of songwriting and at the same time I took lessons of the flute from my father and my father said I want to teach you on the Sunday afternoon maybe one hour one and a half hour but only if you work for it and if you play a few notes then I immediately will notice if you worked on it or not. And if you did not, then I'm not going to spend so much time on you. So this was a nice kind of white blackmail system. And I worked actually for it. And he taught me 
the flute. And he always said the most important thing in music, in his opinion, is to move people and touch their heart with a beautiful tone rather than with a lot of notes. Everybody can do that. But really touch with a note. Even one note can be one whole story. And I tried to give you that example. I try.
so then I came to Amsterdam to study history of art because that was probably the best thing to do because I didn't want to go to conservatory because in jazz and in classical music there were so many people that I had so much admiration for that I didn't want to compete against them in any way and I didn't want to work in their shadow of course so I rather wanted to do something else and go to concerts in the evening and enjoy them but I came suddenly in a cabaret group of Ramse Shafi. He was a very famous singer songwriter in Holland. And he taught me actually the way to behave on stage and the way to, uh, to give the people happiness and also to uh, be joyful and also deep at the same time. And I remember the song that I did for the, uh, the first time that I met him and I had to play something and I was very nervous. And I composed a song about the girl that I loved and that was uh, going with another one and I lied about the night I went with her because I didn't have any night with her. But the song says, I will never forget the nights with you. So, and I will do it in Dutch. I'm very sorry, but maybe I can translate a little later. It's, it's called The Wind and the Volk, The Wind and the Clouds. De wolken, de zee en de zon, met de maan en de sterren erbij. Een beek, een rivier, een fontein en een bron, dat alles ben je voor mij. Geen ogenblik laat de gedachte me los, aan de vorm van je handen, de kleur van je blos. De wind en de wolken, de zee en de zon, alles ben jij. Nooit zal ik vergeten, liefste, de nachten samen met jou. Altijd blijven herinneren, liefste, je ogen als meren zo blauw. Je bent nu bij hem in een andere stad, met andere huizen en straten. Vergeet wat we samen hebben gehad, nu jij me voorgoed hebt verlaten. Maar wat is het nut van het hele bestaan, als wij met z'n tweeën niet verder mee gaan? Toch ben je en blijf je de enige vrouw van wie ik hou. Altijd blijven herinneren, liefste, je ogen als meren zo blauw. De wind en de wolken, de zee en de zon, met de maan en de sterren erbij. Een beek, een rivier, een fontein en een bron, dat alles ben je voor mij. Geen ogenblik laat de gedachte me los, aan de vorm van je handen, de kleur van je blos. De wind en de wolken, de zee en de zon, alles ben jij. Nooit zal ik vergeten, liefste, de nachten samen met jou. Altijd blijven herinneren, liefste, je ogen als meren zo blauw. So with this song, I, I could do this song every night because we were only allowed to play one little solo and for the rest it was Ramses himself who did a whole tour de chant with a lot of chansons and Lisbeth Liszt, the girl that was already famous before I entered that group. And it was also accompanied by a very famous jazz trio of Louis van Dijk. Maybe you ever heard of him. He was the f most famous jazz and classical pianist in Holland. And then I heard, I think from Ramses himself, or from one of the girls of the accompanying singers that I was also part of, there was a guy of 19 years old, like I was 19 then, 
and his name was Jimmy Webb. And he was able to compose for a movie actor called Richard Harris, a song of eight and a half minutes long called MacArthur Park. And I heard that song and I was flabbergasted. That's maybe an old fashioned term, I don't know. But I was totally taken, token by surprise, so beautiful that song was. And I wanted to have that song on the repertoire. And I remember that I was so much in awe for the composer and also for the beautiful way of singing of Mr. Uh, Richard Harris. He was crooning, he was talking and singing through. And I was also thinking that I could do it also because there was not so much emphasis on the very singing as such. So what I remember of MacArthur Park, I'd like to sing and try to sing and play now for you, MacArthur Park by Jimmy Webb. To run one step ahead as we followed in the dance. Between the parted pages, and we pressed in love's hot fevered iron like a striped pair of pants. Flowing down Someone left a cake out in the rain I don't think that I can take it Cause it took so long to bake it And I never have that recipe again Stripe a pair of pants. MacArthur Park is melting in the dark. All the sweet green icing flowing down. Someone left a cake out in the rain. I don't think that I can take it, cause it took so long to bake it, and I never have that recipe again. I 
I will win the worship in her eyes And I will lose it I will have the things that I desire And let my passions flow like rivers to the sky And after all the loves of my life After all the loves of my life I'll be thinking of you And wondering Why Focus started. First, it was a trio called Thijs van Leer Trio, and then I rebaptized it into Focus because I thought Focus is maybe a way to focus yourself on your own problematics, on problems. Maybe you even don't need a shrink anymore because you can really concentrate and solve your own problems via music. Music can be the catalyzer. Music can even, yeah, be the medical pill. And of course, music also can make you happy and make you dance. But in the end, music can really uh, make you better, make you beautiful and fresh, and so you can take life again and also i thought focus is a beautiful name because it's a latin name it means fire and also the fire in the house also the coziness of the family the family itself and i thought focus is the right name for the group and then 
after we did an album in London, which was the mecca of rock for us continental Europeans. It was like fantastic to come to England and to do our first album. And we did that with a lot of joy and a lot of pleasure. But no record company was interested in our material. Nobody. Eight and a half months we have to we had to wait. And then we went into the studio with a song called House of the King. And that was composed in Mallorca when we were disqualified uh, on a contest of international bands because we were playing too long and they took out the electricity and there we were <laughs> disqualified. And then one of the members of the group ruined the dressing room and another one went with his flute in the public and that was me ending the song without electricity. And the next morning we had a lot of hangovers. And in that hangover we composed House of the King. And for that I'd like to invite our beautiful guitarist of Focus, Mr. Menno Gotjes on stage. Menno, where are you? Ah, there you are. Let's do Focus One. The very first song was composed for this group. 
And it goes like this. Sylvia. I wrote a special song to, for Sylvia, the girl that was also in the Grams of Shafi group, on a very nice lyric. I thought I could do everything on my own. I was always stripping the town alone. A lot of syllabus, but you know, <laughs> about the girl that thought she could do everything, you know, and she was on top of everything, mastering everything until she meets this one that guy and then she fall everything in her life falls as a pudding apart and so sad story and sylvia listened to the song and she was not that enthusiastic so i said okay i keep it i put it in the shelf in the cupboard and a few years it stands there it stayed there and then with focus we recorded it as an instrumental, and it became a big hit. In England, it even became bigger than Hocus Pocus, I think. And here it is, Sylvia.
Thank you very much. Oh, thanks a lot. We have a little information. Thanks.
us a little improvisation on a song called Autumn Leaves. And in French, it's of course a French chanson, and then it's Les Feuilles Mortes. It's about autumn, which is not very conspicuous yet, because we have a warm, beautiful warm days now. But it was like symbolically, metaphorically, the autumn. I'd like to sing you one song of an album that I created together with my first wife, Rosalie, and Paul Buckmaster, the arranger, composer. And uh, he did beautiful work for Elton John. Your song, you remember, it's a little bit funny. The strings you hear there are Paul Buckmaster's work. And he also worked with Dave Bowie for uh, Ground Control to Major Tom, you remember. Space Odyssey, Oddity. And he worked with Miles Davis and with many other people. Vanessa Paradise, Vanessa Paradis, and many other people. And we did a song called Eddie, and it's about my father, who suffered so much in the war that he could not speak anymore his heart. Musically, yes, playing the flute, it was phenomenal. But speech-wise, it was problematic. And especially for him, we created a song called Eddie. His name was Eddie. Just like Eddie in the morning He never said, although he could I know someone who would But he never woke to have an Yes, I think of things unnoticed Like what happens in the egg As it lies without emotion Just like Eddie's sleeping head When I come home in the morning Softly as I dread the dawn I know things that are important That have only just begun Across the table Smiles are dying on your face Being here with my heart open Seems a little out of place Seems a little out of place Seems a little out of place Yeah, yeah, yeah Here I go. 
go, here I go, here I go I'm gonna fly away Here I go, here I go, here I go Thank you very much Thank you I remember my father came from Israel once and he took a little uh, 45 tours record with him with a guy on a motorbike next to a guy on a camel, the photograph. And I remember a little, the song of it, and it was called Sher Habukrim. And then I thought, what a nice song. And I don't know if I can sing it, but I'll try it for you. And it goes like...
Thank you very much. I'll play you a song which we also play with a group called Focus, and it's even there on Focus number 10, which is available here with my wife, my wife Annelies. And um, Menno and I will not play tonight, so I play it alone for you. It's called Tango. And why did I choose that? And why did I compose it? I saw a beautiful television documentary about Rubinstein, the very famous pianist. And it was done by Francois Reichenbach. He did beautiful documentaries about Salvador Dali, the painter, Marc Chagall, the painter, many painters, many pictorial artists, but also Rubinstein, the pianist. And there was a portrait about him as a musician, but also as a family man, as a father, grandfather, grand-grandfather. And then the beautiful question came, what is the most beautiful piece of music you ever heard? And then he thought for a few seconds and he said, it was an old tango that was sung by my nanny, my second mother, and she was a Hungarian gypsy. And I was like small, a little bigger than a baby, how I call that, like a little guy. And she was trying to get me asleep singing this song. And then he played it with two fingers on the piano. And I was not at all impressed, by the way. <coughs> I thought, oh, is that all? But it kept me busy and that very night and also late night, I tried to also create a tango. Later, I rebaptized it into Le Tango, hoping that a French or an English or American film director would choose it as a leitmotif for his coming film. I'm afraid it did not happen, so you could speak about a music for an unmade movie, Le Tango. <laughs>
fascinated me, ladies and gentlemen, is still the more religiously inclined lyric. And we have a friend, and we is Annelies and I, we have a friend in Germany who is Chilean, and he had the, uh, he was asked to make a statue for the Vatican on one of the very last empty places on the St. Peter's Church of Santa Teresa, the first holy person of Chile. And he worked like three years on it, and he made out of, uh, how do you call that, concrete marble from Carrara, he made a beautiful statue of five and a half meters high. And we followed the whole development of this statue from the first maquette until the final result. And then we had a little party when it was finished in his beautiful house in uh, Germany. And he said on 11 o'clock or 11.30 in the night, Thais, let's make a song for this Santa Teresa. And I was tired and had a few wines and said, no, let's do that tomorrow. No, he said, we're going to do it today, now. And he said, why don't you start just thinking of Santa Teresa? And I started and we made together a song. He did the lyrics, I did the music, and his wife and my wife finished the song. So we were actually all four composing this song for the Holy Santa, for the Holy Teresa. And he said then, we are going to play it on the moment that the Pope is unveiling the statue in the Vatican. I said, no, this is nonsense, please. Don't say rubbish. But it actually happened. And we were with focus on a tour in England. And exactly the 6th of October, <coughs> which is now, I think, six or seven years from uh, ago, I had two days off, and it was in Aberdeen, and I flew to Rome, and I played it together with the choir of the uh, 16th, 16th chapel, together while the Pope, and it was Pope John Paul II, just before he died, and he did it, and 20 meters from there, I was playing the flute with this choir a cappella, and I was crying, not being Catholic, but I was so moved. And then during the service in the big uh, cathedral, we did it another four times, and it was so beautiful. And I'd like to invite Annelise on stage to try and sing this little song together with me. Annelise, I don't know where you are, but I'd like you on stage. Where are you? Santa Teresa 
give them the thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. We'd like to uh, continue with a second performance of Mr. Master Menno Gootjes. Menno, where are you? We'd like to uh, start with a song which is probably very hard on this guitar, on this acoustic one, but we try it for you. You're the first witness in the world. It's called La Cathedrale de Strasbourg. It was actually when I was like eight or nine years old, I went with my parents and my brother Frank with a caravan and a car to Strasbourg seeing this beautiful cathedral, maybe you know it, a very long tower. But I was not so impressed by the tower. I was impressed by the sound of the bells. That was so amazing. And I think still, it's so amazing when you hear it. So I made a song out of that. And it goes like this.
typical electric guitar piece we'd like to try now acoustically. We never did that before. You're actually the very, very, very first witness. It's called Focus 3.
just try to say how beautiful evening I have had with you. Thanks a lot. We'd like to play for you a song called Focus 7. It's not the most spectacular song, but maybe you like it. Focus 7. Thank you. 